Hey guys, this is Ashley. Welcome on back to my channel. And it is time for a sister lock update. It has been so long since I've given you one. The last one I want to say is back in March. So it's been about six months. And as you know, at that particular time, I had a trim. But if you are new to this channel, welcome. And if you're older but goody, welcome on back. My name is Ashley. I have a doctorate in pharmacy and I love makeup. So that's how you get Dr. Ash and her makeup. But please just call me Ash or Ashley. And eyeshadow is my favorite thing to talk about on my channel but I've also been documenting my sister lock journey and you guys love it I get so many new people and so many views even when my channel hasn't really been running because I have not been feeling well and I'm just slowly getting into filming and if you see a video trust it's taking me days to pull it together but every time I go and look at my analytics y'all are loving the sister lock video so thank you so much so I was like I definitely owe an update plus there's been many changes to my hair I feel like so let's go ahead and get started and yes let's jump into this update so first up I want to talk about six months ago I had my first sister lock trim so I definitely wanted to give you guys an update about that so the sister lock trim I felt like went very well now to me it was a difference in my hair I'm going to like pop in a picture um, if you remember my hair, I was also throwing many other pictures. It was long. It was probably around here, but I had that one lock. It was on this side and it would stretch out to about right here. Like I could just pull it down. Okay. And so that means this little friend right here, that'd be super stretched out. That looks a little weak actually right here. Cause who knows? She's, you know, this lock, it would get caught in things. It, it just, yeah, she's, as you can see a little thin right there we're gonna put yeah you just probably see it right there <laughs> them little three four five strands or whatever just hang it on honey but yes she's gonna and it never cooperated the rest of my hair could be here but this could be hanging down here i can literally take it wrap it around like a ponytail it did whatever it wanted to do sometimes it would curl sometimes it wouldn't curl it just it lived this own very best life and i never cut it off okay so around february really around january so my lactician said to me hey i think it's time for a trim and i was like okay you're probably right because i had gotten a good length of hair my hair was settled it's locking process you know I had the budding and everything like that and I was like okay so I thought about it during the whole time between the six and eight weeks between my next retie and so right before the retie I communicated to her like hey I'm ready to go ahead and get the trim with my next sister lock retie and she said okay great so I got that in March and you guys how I saw her look my hair was at that particular time blunt I did roll my hair I'll talk about that in a moment with some other day updates so right now my hair is probably as like as straight as it's going to be with some curls in it but as you can see it comes to about right here and I think before it was probably about right here I haven't measured but it's been tremendous growth with my sister like trim I feel like it was very beneficial for my hair so if you're nervous about it so one of the reasons why I got the trim if you notice when I got my sister like started back in 2020 I have had colored hair for pretty much like 15 years or so basically ever since I went to college back in 2002 my hair was this color when I came back it was some version of this particular color and this is the color I particularly have gravitated to there was one time period probably around 2009 2010 where I was just rocking my natural hair color and then I kind of went back to the blonde so when I got my sister locks installed I actually had just colored my hair probably against my sister lock consultant's wishes but I had just colored my hair so I had blonde sister locks if you look back at all the videos from initiating and my one month start you can see so basically everything had grown out and I literally waited three years so it was actually be a year just made a year since I had my hair recolored so and I got what's called like a balayage I didn't know what the term meant but the guy explained it to me and um, it's basically where you kind of leave your roots your same and then they paint and everything like that so I decided I did not want to have my roots dyed this particular time because I look like all one color. But the person who was doing my hair before, she was like a staunch believer, like everything had to be dyed. Like, I mean, these little baby hairs. But basically, I would always like my color a couple weeks later, maybe a month later for the most when I kind of got a little root because I didn't look like all one color. So when I got my locks actually dyed after being installed and 
um, established for three years, I went to a colorist and I went to somebody who my sister lot consulted told me to go to. She was like, I recommend Color Me Bad. So they go by Color Me Bad Chicago. You can follow them on Instagram. They color her sister locks. They do a lot of natural hair. I mean, and they just don't do locks. They do regular color. They do fantasy colors, like all those different blended colors. Some of the stylists in there, they do uh, more traditional locks. They do the silk press. They do the curly cuts. I mean, they kind of do it all when it comes to natural hair, but they don't do sister locks. So I was like, hey, Tanya, that's my sister lock consultant, recommended me. And she said, I should see you guys to do my color. So we did a consultation and everything. So Prior to that, my hair locking, I had different levels and different lengths. And sometimes that can happen with your hair with the locking process. When you are locking your hair in general, um, the hair that is weakened and is damaged, and even though they can get it into a lock, eventually when this hair starts coming in and it's more integrity in this particular hair that's grown out of your scalp versus the hair that was on your head when you established your locks, unless you're somebody who just started from like, fresh, like no damaged hair, did a bold, big chop, and then an install. But my hair was about right here, as you can see in all the videos and everything once I finished the install. So all of that hair just kind of got weak. And I've been very candid about that. And it was times where like some of the hair here, I could just kind of like pull off, like the lock would just like kind of just snap. And I was like, I would just kind of pull it off because I'm going to lose that in anyway. So I had a lot of unevenness. And then also like right here, I'm going to turn around. But right here, this little part that I'm holding here, like this is the crown. So my hair was kind of cut in layers. So, you know, this was, you know, a lot shorter. So now it's down here. So if you were to look at my hair and fix it up and like I still have a tiny bit of thinness in here, but it's not thin like how it used to be by sure for anything. You see my grid, you know. Everything is just kind of doing what it needs to do. Um, it's like, let me move forward. Just so I can see. This is what my hair looks like now. So it's very full. And as you can see, my hair is pretty much even. Now I do have some curls in it, so it's not gonna fall super even, but it is, I mean, at this particular juncture because of my styling, but as you can see, my hair is pretty much even, um, it's grown out even, and with me trimming my hair, I feel like my hair has kind of gone back full throttle, like it was going to keep growing, it was going to be longer, but my hair is literally at bra strap lift. When I wet it, I washed it yesterday, and everything was just laying together, everything was just bra strap lift, as you can see right here. Okay, I usually don't zoom up this far, but you can definitely see, and I'm more relaxed and this is what my hair looks like when it's laying in the back. So it is rather long. I have nice ponytail length, nice high bun length, a lot of fullness. And it's like, it's long when I wear a low ponytail. It's long when I wear a higher ponytail. If I want to do a bun, it's pretty much, it's really full. So as you can see, the fullness has come back. As you can see, my color has grown out a lot from just from just the initial coloring. And I feel like I've seen so many benefits. Like my overall hair is healthy. It's kind of like when you get a silk press and you cut your ends, I feel like it's kind of like the same experience when getting your sister locks trim. So even though I have sister locks, I'm still love to watch those silk press videos that come up on Instagram where people like get their hair blown down and I'm like, ooh, we can see right through that. Like your hair is damaged and then, you know, they clip the ends and you see the growth and all of the magic. I feel like it's kind of like the same thing with the sister locks. You know, at first I was hesitant because I was like, dang, you know, my hair was going like right here. I was like, even one of my technicians at work, she was like, yeah, your hair was way longer than that. But after like a couple of days, I was like, I really see the benefit of getting my locks trim because everything looks so full. It looked unique. It looked uniform. Um, my hair looked thicker, which is also something important if you are a person that has thin, fine hair. I definitely didn't mention that in my opening and I usually do. So I'm a person that has thin, fine hair curly hair, soft texture hair. And I can honestly say now that I have my sister locks, like my hair is not giving that. And that's probably not like my actual statement. I usually say thin, fine. Yeah, thin, fine. 
yeah, that's the basis of my hair is thin and it's fine. It's soft. I don't know what like number lettering scale you would call it as far as texturing, but it's definitely thin and fine. And I feel like a lot of people have gravitated to my channel because of their hair texture. And I would definitely always say that sister locks have been the best thing for me. Like today I had a little bit more cool, uh, curl, but I went to a fundraiser and it was kind of warm in there and my hair kind of dropped, but my hair still looks good. If I had my natural, my loose natural hair, whew, it would be a mess. Okay. It, it would definitely just be a mess. So like I said, the trim has been very beneficial. So if you're worried about getting the trim, I would say, just go ahead and do it. Now, one thing I was kind of concerned about getting a trim, it was like, okay, so you're cutting the ends of the hair. How does that work? Because everything that we've been taught since we've been locking our hair is like braid and band, protect your ends, make sure your hair is not raveling. And I did not have any of that. I, um, I know I had a lot of budding on the ends and it just kind of stayed the same. Actually, when I wash my hair, I really don't braid the man too much. I will really kind of braid this section and I'll braid this section and the back I'll just let free. And that's because I have explained before that when I wash my hair, I find it heavy to wash. Like it's like it's heavy because the locks get heavy and everything like that. And that water soaking it and penetrating it just makes it like heavy. I kind of keep, uh, like, I kind of feel like it's like, well, if you wash your box braids, then it, it just feels heavy. So that's how I kind of uh, resonate that feeling too. So I didn't have any of that with my hair unraveling. I might have a couple of ends that seem like a little bit more open than the other ones like this one right here, but everything has been all good. My hair has taken to the trim so well. I'm really glad that I did it because some of that hair that was just kind of hanging on and making it look ratty in certain regards. I feel like it's now gone. It's just like my hair has been so much healthier. Um, it's definitely has retained the length. It's grown out. Not that I wasn't retaining length with those particular ends in because I wouldn't say it's totally the same as being a loose natural or it's just like splitting up the ends of the hair shaft. But Overall, the general health of my hair just feels better by actually completing that cut and just kind of getting everything to an even point. And it was just good that I was at a length where I felt comfortable enough to do that because I think that's a lot of times when you are transitioning into something like this as a lifelong process and definitely like sister likes it. Or locks in general. It's like the longer you have them, the better they look. Like the glory is like, oh, how long you've been locked because they look good. You, you know, you start off in your uh, it's installation phase. You're like, who? I don't know. I see so many women. They're like, oh, I don't know. I look really scalpy. I had that scalpy feeling too. But then I watched them a couple weeks later. Then I felt a little bit better about them because I was like, oh, they're one and one. And then three and four months, I was like, okay, they're looking thicker. Six months, I was like, all right. I hit a year. I was like, okay. Then I hit the two-year mark and I was like, this is even better. It hit that three-year mark. I was like, okay, I'm really working with something. My hair is looking good. I'm not worried about it. It's not looking crazy. It's not looking in a stage where it's like, oh, I see you trying them locks, girl, but I don't know if they really work it for you, if your hair is taken to it. And not to say that I had a whole lot of experience like that, but it's just like a fine walk through. Like I've seen some videos on Instagram and people are like, this is not what I expected when they first locked their hair because, you know, it's such a total transformation. You're kind of scalpy. You see all things, um, just kind of your hair is just so much different. You're going through this transition phase, but you're trying to get to all these girls that you see on the gram that have like these gorgeous, gorgeous long locks. And a lot of them have been locked for years. So if you were to go back and look at what they look like in their transitions, they probably had some of those similar experiences or something like the styles really help when you're in these transition phases. Like I remember when I first locked my hair, like the first few weeks, I had to kind of wash my hair once a week because the oil, the natural oils of my scalp would come down and my hair was thinner. And that would happen with my hair in general. And so my hair would look way down and it would look crunchy and it wouldn't look good. And then the more mature my locks got, I was able to like wash my hair less and less. Sometimes, like, look, the last couple retires, but I've also been sick. I'm going to put that caveat in there. So I know it's summertime. I've been sick. I've been in the house a lot. Um, it's been days I haven't left the house for like five days at a time, to be honest. And my hair has just been in a scarf. Um, I was hospitalized also, but, um, 
my hair was in the scarf and I was hospitalized like two days after getting a retie and I had my scarf with me. But so I haven't washed my hair as much. But now I can literally go through a retie and only wash my hair twice between the six and eight weeks. And my hair stays pretty clean. But that's also because I haven't been outside as much because I'm not sweating in my hair. But if it was like a normal summer, I would probably wash my hair a little bit longer. But I'm just saying that to say that I can stretch out those particular periods longer because my hair is more mature. So just getting to a good place where you feel like you're comfortable with the length, like if you were to lose some of that length and get your um, your your cut or your trim, it's important. So I felt like it was important for me. Like if I lost a lot of hair, like I was very candid. I was like, girl, I don't want to come on here scalped. Like I don't want to come on here looking like you would just cut all my hair off. And you know, it was very long bobbish when she finished it but I liked it you know I was like okay it's a good length at first I was like mm, it's good but then a few days and I was like mm, I'm liking this my hair is looking full and a lot of people in the comments said the same thing too and so I think that's very important so kind of get to a stage where you feel like you'll be comfortable with your sister lock consultant uh, trimming your hair if you kind of need that trim just to kind of get those ends off during the locking process that are maybe just so much weaker and thinner but you're still kind of retaining some length so if you can still kind of do the styles that you are liking to do and still love your hair because like I said this is a total commitment you just want to love and embrace your hair so that was very important for me and I feel like it's just really paid off you see the length um I really want to get my hair recolored um, it's grown out a lot. Um, it doesn't look so bad. So like in certain areas like this, it's going to look less because of the type of underpainting he did. You know, like I said, it got a balayage. So some parts of my hair, he didn't color as much. And so probably have like this much new growth like underneath here because, you know, they do the whole painting and the foil techniques and everything like that. Um, but definitely in the front right here, it was probably up to about right here. So I do have a good amount of color that has grown out. I would like to do that, but... Um, I'm going, I thought I was going to be able to get my hair color. It's, it's been expensive. Like I said, um, I think it was like two or almost $300 by the time I tipped him, but I feel like it was worth it because he really did a great job and used really outstanding products with, um, you know, coloring my hair and he's a real colorist and it was somebody that my sister like, like Tisha, you know, recommended and it's not something I'm getting done all the time. So it's probably going to be a once a year goal. I wanted to kind of go maybe in August or so, but I don't feel like it looks bad. It's nowhere near to before I got colored. Cause if you had the picture, I only had like this much left, literally like everything was dark, but, um, like I haven't, I've been, like I said, I've been sick. I haven't been working. So I feel like that's just not the best way, even though I have this, I have you know, like medical benefits and everything like that. And I have enough money to pay my bills, but I just feel like as far as like extra expenditures, like that might not be the best way to spend my money. That's what I want to say. So I'm like, mm, I'm going to hold off on that for like a, a little bit longer. I was trying to decide if I wanted to do ginger. I don't know. Let me know. I was trying to decide if I wanted to do ginger with maybe a little bit of, you know, highlight like this. Now he said, if I did, the ginger um it would kind of revert back to this color it, towards the summertime which was something I would be happy with so that wouldn't bother me but I don't know let me know I may or may not do it I'll just kind of decide because like I said I've usually been kind of locked in with this particular hair color um something else that I wanted to talk about is um little hacks that have just like helped me along the way so um, as my locks have gotten more mature or sometimes I don't wash as much or just moisture. I have been kind of doing this little hack in between washing where it's like, okay, my hair still looks good. It doesn't look bad. Like my scalp isn't dirty, but my hair feels a little dry. And I always can kind of feel when my hair feels a little dry because like this feels a little bit more crunchy. It definitely feels more stiff. And at the while of being locked, you can tell when your hair feels dry. So I did also tell you about like, you know, Everybody, of course, talks about water, distilled water with the spray bottle or rose water. I've also showed you guys the Sister Lock Moisturizer Spray. But one thing that I feel that has like had, that's like done wonders for moisture is um, kind of like a full steam session. OK, so what I mean is if I get in the shower, put my hair in a ponytail and so it's out the way. 
And just let that mist and that steam for the shower, maybe doing that once or twice a week when it's kind of in a drier period or like maybe day one and day two, my locks will feel so good. I feel like that's a great way to get instant moisture. I've been doing that for like maybe the last six months and my hair has been so healthy. It's been feeling so moisturized where I'm not adding a bunch of like rose water or that moisturizing mist to it. Like I have general penetration into my locks. Like I know a lot of people, they'll sit underneath a steam um, hood dryer to get that in after conditioning and things like that. And I felt like that has been a quick, very helpful way. You're taking your shower, put your hair in a ponytail, you know, out the way so the water doesn't touch it. You're not really letting water touch it. Every once in a while, I will take a little and do like this if need be. But that steam just kind of hitting your hair has done wonders for the moisture. And I feel like every time I see my life session, she's like, your hair has been just very healthy. I don't even think I've told, told her I do that, but I've been doing that and I've been very impressed with how my hair feels by doing that. So another exciting thing is that I have gotten <laughs> two new baby locks, right? So right here, cause you know, I've talked about the wonders of locking your hair. And if you used to be a loose natural, like sometimes this wouldn't even happen. Like, you know, your hair is just not flourishing that in a way that it does with the locks. But I have these two little babies right here, right? And she established them in June when I got my hair retied and they held on well. So they were working, they were holding on well. I had to wash my hair and they were like puffy, didn't really hold on that well. So, then I washed my hair a second time right before my retie. And one, this one, I want to say, is the one that came completely out. This one was hanging on by the chinny chin chin. Like, it was just hanging on by a thread. And I told her, I was like, yeah, they were fine until I washed my hair the first time and then washed my hair the second time. This one completely unraveled. I said, but I would like to keep these locks if you could kind of, you know, restart them again or keep them the integrity. Because if you look at my hairline, you know, this is like too much hair to just be sweeping into another lock. And with all of this hair, like I could use these two extra locks along my hairline just for the density of my hair. So I got ready to wash my hair last night. I was like, look, we can't have these little babies unraveling, but they're too short. Cause I want to say the second time I washed my hair, I did incorporate this sucker in with a braid in this one too. And it did not help the cause at all because it was so short. But let me show you what helped, okay? So I don't know if you guys have seen my pipe cleaner video where I've done like the pipe cleaner curls. So I was like, I need something. I was like, clip, what? I don't know. I can't tape it down. I can't put like a little band across it because then I'm not going to be able to wash this particular hair. So this is how I handled this problem. And I felt like this would be an easy fix if you have like new locks around the perimeter and you need to keep them going. But it, clearly you ain't braiding and banding none of this. So took my little pipe cleaner that I did my pipe cleaning curls with and I just kind of really because it's short I just did like wrapped it around like this and then just took the pipe cleaner and it was like really no method I just kind of got the hair around the pipe cleaner and wrapped it around and did on a number like this and I did this on each side of my hair okay and then like I said, I usually braid the beginning of my hair or the front part of my hair. And I was like, I definitely kind of want to braid this because I don't want this and this, you know, because I have one over here, another pipe cleaner. I don't want this gonna getting mixed in and being hard to wash. So I put a braid right here and a braid right here. And same thing on this side. And I have my two pipe cleaners. So, cause I was like, you know, at the end of the day, like when you wash your hair, it's not going to be too bad right here. Like if a little water on here, but we needed to keep the, the integrity of the lock. And as you can see, it's still there. So, you know, I can get around here with the braids and everything like that. So um, I washed my hair. And then once I finished washing my hair, I took my braids out. And then I took my little pipe cleaner out. And it kind of did this little curl thing because... You know, my hair is really naturally curly for the most part. And and I was like, okay, the locks are still in place and it doesn't look bad. And I took these out and I was able to just kind of go ahead, separate my hair, do my little foam rollers. 
and go about my business, okay? Now, another thing I have noticed since doing my sister lock trim is that because my ends are even, they're a little bit more blunt and I don't have the straggliness. So when I go ahead to roll my hair, it sometimes is a little harder to catch the ends. It's kind of like when they say braiders hate those blunt, even cut ends, like good ends, because they feel like it's harder to tuck healthy ends versus when people have those raggedy ends or part is here, here is here, and you know, with the braid. But one thing I realized, I was like, okay, <laughs> when I do my little phone rollers, or even sometimes with the, uh, what's the names, it's like harder for the ends. So like that was a horrible rolling job, but you know, I have to be more careful when I go ahead and roll my hair. And in addition, because my hair is thicker and it's longer, I have to use more of these. Now, I kind of said when I took my hair out, I was like, well, gosh, darn, I just be, <laughs> this is crazy because I washed my hair around seven o'clock last night. I was done by the time I finished, you know, and doing everything else that you do in the shower. It was probably like, well, I probably got started at 7 .50. It was about eight o'clock. Let's say it's eight o'clock. I rolled my hair immediately and then I let it just kind of like start air drying, right? And around 10, 11, I was like, mm, I should hit it with the dryer. And I'm gonna show, let me show you what I get. All right, so I got like my handy dandy old school blow dryer right here, right? Regular blow dryer. And I had a hooded dryer at one point, but look, that's just ain't for me just sitting there in that one spot. You just like stuck in a position. But I bought one of these like little attachments from Amazon and you know, it's basically like a little cap and a little cord, okay? So here we go. So you put this little end on the end of the dryer, like such. Just gonna wrap it around. Boom, there we go, right? Now, you got your hair in the rollers. Pretend my hair is in rollers. And you put this on, and it has a little thing. It has a little chin strap. I don't do all that, right? And then it's going, you know, you turn your dryer on and, you know, so I hit it with the dryer for about like 45 minutes or so. to so like help with the drying process. And then this morning I took my hair out. I was like, it was about 830. I was like, mm, I don't know how dry it is. It doesn't seem as dry. So I hit it with the dryer about 30 more minutes and I didn't take my hair down until about 10, 15. And the curls were good, but they were not my best work. Like this is kind of giving a weekend. But like I said, I went to place, it was hot, my hair dropped, blah, 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 blah. But if my curls were a little bit more popping, then it would work. I did use my mousse per usual, but one thing I've noticed, I definitely have to use more rollers. It takes a lot longer for my hair to dry. So that's one thing because the ends are like... You know, all the ends are like the same length. So all that hair is rolled together. And then your hair is just getting longer and longer. So now you got it wrapped around. It's going to just take longer to dry. So that is something that I have been experiencing. And then another little hack I've been using because, hey, you know, you, you got locks. So it's like you got all these parts and stuff when you do your hair and put in these rollers or the pipe cleaners or your braid out or whatever you do. And like the dryer be tearing me up because it'd be like in the parts of like, ooh, or in the thin spots, like right in here, like, ooh, you know, just so sometimes I put the little scarf. Boom, boom, boom. You got the scarf. And then, you know, I got my rollers or whatever pipe cleaners, whatever style I'm doing. And then I put the hood on and then I put my dryer on. So it like you get the same effect, but I don't have the whole, oh my God, my scalp is on fire and I can't tolerate this whole drying process. So that is something I definitely wanted to come on and talk to you about, but I definitely wanted to do a follow-up and show you the progress of my hair because I feel like it's super important. Like if you're scared to get your Syslox trim, like I said, find a point where your hair gets to and you're like if my hair was to this length would i be okay with it at this particular point in my journey and then let them go ahead and trip it and then i was just talking to you like don't don't be cutting everything off like you know it's certain parts like i said in the crown like if you cut my hair this short everything this short i would be upset because obviously this section started off so much shorter when you locked it versus everything down here 
So if you cut my hair to here, I'm be pissed. And at the moment, it, you know, at the moment it wasn't even there. It was shorter than that. So, you know, I, I like, I have a few layers in my hair and I'm okay with that, but you know, and I kind of like the layers, like the layers just give it a little fun. It gives us the volume, especially when you're a person who has finer hair. So I embrace it. Um, but I would definitely say just pick a point. If you know that you kind of need to have that trim just for the health and the integrity of your locks and the ends looking ratty and everything like that, pick a point that you're comfortable at where your hair would be like, okay, if it was a little bit shorter than this, I would be okay. And like I said, it's just kind of worked out really well for me and I don't regret it. And I'm like, shoot, my hair back. Like next summer, or I think by Christmas, I'm going to be... If I'm here, like, cause you know, in the front, it kind of looks a little shorter than it does in the back per se. So I think by Christmas, I'll probably be about right here. That's in what, about three and a half months in September. Yeah. So about four and a half months, I think I can literally, well, it might be exaggerating, but no, it might not be. So, you know, or definitely by the top of the year for sure, you know, because I'll probably I'll have a retie on the 30th of September and or the, or next two two weeks. We got the next I'll have a retie and then I'll probably have two more by the end of the year. And so I think it will definitely be there. And then next summer, I just can't wait to see it flourish. If you guys are still wondering, I am still taking my Nutrafol vitamins. Um, been a little lackadaisical, but I've been kind of more on it because like I said, I've been sick. And so my body's been through a lot of stress. So I want to make sure that my hair is flourishing. I've been drinking a lot of water, you know, you know drink a lot of water to also help with your hair. It helps with the hydration. And then I'm taking my other vitamins. So I take like chlor chlorella and it's like a whole food. So you can it's like a lot of nutrients with that. So I feel like everything that I've been doing, and then like I say, take care of your hair because a lot of times um, a friend also said, because she has micro lot, she's been doing the ponytails up here. And I do that too sometimes, but she was like, ooh, like my stylist was like, my, or my consultant was like, you gotta lay off the ponytails because you're pulling it so tight. So I kind of like to do the pipe cleaner curls a lot because even though they're like, so extensive for me to put in. It can take me an hour to put them in. It can take me like 45 minutes to take them out. My hair is pretty much set. It'll be tighter, but it'll fall and fall and fall. And that style could last me three to almost a month. And that way, if it, even if I do a ponytail, it's still styled versus when my hair is just kind of bone straight, then I'm more gravitated, especially to put it in like a ponytail back or anything like that. And I don't want a lot of pulling on here because I don't want to damage my locks. Since I do have a few like, you know, if you start pulling on your hair, it will mess up your locks. You know, this one's a little bit shorter. I think it had a little bit of damage at one point, but now it's like thriving and it's getting on point. And you can see the end is like a little bit bigger, but you know, you just want to be careful about not over styling it and pulling it too tight. So all those things are still like things to consider, but I hope you guys like this update. I'm happy to go ahead. I do want to go ahead and try um, there is something called wrap -a lock I do want to go ahead and try that. That is like a version of a pipe cleaner type of style. The product is actually called wrap -a lock So let me know if you've tried that. And it's basically going to help you achieve those pipe cleaner curls, but going to be a better tool where versus like these art supplies, because these are pipe, like real out pipe cleaners, like art supplies. And as you can see, they're fuzzy. And so as you can see, there are a few little, well, probably can't, let's see. As you can see, I do have a little bit of hair wrapped around it that gets caught in the pipe cleaners, but I'm very gentle. I, I don't pull mine out like you might see with some people because like, as you can see, my hair is fuzzier because I have fine hair. So I actually unravel them versus just sliding them out. So make sure my hair isn't pulling too much. So I do want to try that. And then when I purchase those, I will demo that for you. And then I don't know if you guys follow Kendra Lachey, but she has micro locks, but she also sells like headbands and she sells like beads and things like that. I did ask if my hair was able to handle that. And it's like lock sprinkles. Like you can, um, take a lock and then you can take some string and kind of sew it in and out 
of your hair. And she said my hair would be able to tolerate that. So I think I do want to try out some lock sprinkles. I think that would be very cute in my hair. Um, just a little, little razzle dazzle, you know, but um, I definitely want to just come on and talk about my locks. So this has like been the state of my hair and I'm excited because like on November 20th, it'll be four years four whole solid years and we'll be going into year four going on the way year five so i'm super excited like this is like the best decision of my life still i still promote it like if you are thinking about locking your hair just go ahead and lock it don't look you just go wish you had started because a lot of people tell you certain things and especially if you have thin and fine hair they're like oh it's not gonna look that good look the proof is in the pity pudding like people ask me and i am very candid i'm like let me pull up a picture this is day one this is after she did the install. I'm gonna move over so I can put it. This is this is what it looked like. And you see what my hair looks like now. And you're telling me you walked up to me. And I'm not shooting my own horn, but the point is like you walked up to me to compliment me. And I'm very grateful to compliment. And you're telling me you've been thinking about it, but you don't know because of the integrity of your hair. And let me tell you, I think I have like some of the thinnest and finest hair out there okay versus a lot of people who say their hair is thin and fine like your hair might be thin and fine but this sister's hair was thin and fine my hair was thicker when i was growing up but i do have autoimmune disease i have lupus i have fibromyalgia so you know those can kind of play into the situation with my hair thinning plus just the overall texture of my hair like look at my dad i'm like yeah yeah it's just gonna start thinning you know what i mean after a while so i'm always very candid like if you stop me on the street i'm like this is day one so if you think about doing it just go ahead and do it i mean at the end of the day like yes it is expensive so i think like you should do right by your locks a lot of people also talk about the cost like oh i can't afford it but if you get your hair done eighty dollars there twenty dollars there da -da 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 -da. you gotta buy the hair here braids this boho whatever da -da 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 -da. ponytail all of that is your install my install was a thousand dollars that was in 2020 but it took her three days <laughs> to install my hair two and a half days really should just say three because i think even the last day it still was like five hours you know what i mean so i think that's generous i've never really been one to spend money on my hair but at the end of the day like you want something this is a lifetime lifetime commitment but at the end of the day don't get so stuck on it if it's not for you at the end of the day it's not for you you tried it but you'll never know until you try it but for me this has provided so much hair freedom um i went to aruba for a week for my birthday and i was fine i just had a couple headbands with me a couple ponytail holders I might have had some shampoo only because I knew I was going to be getting maybe if I got my hair wet in the ocean or the pool. But other than that, I have total hair freedom. Like my hair is vacation ready all the time. And you know, that'd be like half of the vacation prep. It don't even be the trip. It'd be the prep. It'd be like the new outfits. I got to get my nails done. I got to get my lashes done or whatever else you do as your maintenance. I got to get my hair done. My hair is always vacation ready. The only time I think about doing my hair is if I want to do some these because I'm like, dang, it, it got to dry, <laughs> you know, and now that it's getting longer. It's taking longer to dry or my pipe cleaner curls like, hey, it's going to take me about an hour. Then I got to let them dry. I, those actually tend to dry a lot faster because there's less hair. It's only about six locks around the lock around the, a pipe cleaner. So it's not as much as persons like, doing these. But that's the only time I think my man. Oh, and when I'm on schedule an appointment, but you know, I have appointment. I'm always thinking about the next one. I'm like one, two, three, four, five, six. Sometimes it's eight weeks. I don't really like to do the eight weeks because they get, can get hairy in there, especially like in the back where my hair is finer. Like sometimes I'm like, whoo, shad, that lock hadn't hanging on by the by a thread. Like because it's just like some hair has worked its way out the lock, and then you know, or the new growth or things like that. So I'm like, uh, like. At six, seven weeks, eight weeks is like, and it just kind of also depends on what time of year it is and how your hair and what cycle your hair is on growing. So I hope all of these things are helpful. So I just love my sister locks. I hope you love your sister locks. If you have started this journey, so many people have told me they have started this journey and I'm excited for you. So just keep on going. If you're thinking about doing it, girl, just go ahead and do it. I mean, at the end of the day, if you don't like it, just cut it off. Or calm them out. I don't have the patience for that. So I was just going to go back to short because I've had my hair cut very, very short before and been okay. But 
I think if this is like something, if your hair has been struggling and for me, this provided so much hair confidence, that's why I promote it so much. But with all of that being said, let me know down below if you like this video, give this video a big old thumbs up, leave me a comment as always, and let me know if any of these tips were helpful for you. And subscribe to my channel because you know I would love to have you here in my little makeup family and the thing is I might not do sister lock videos all the time but I you know at the moment I haven't been as much I'm kind of getting a little bit better because I've been like I said I've been really sick um <clears throat> if you know you can always see what my hair is looking like because I do post regular makeup content so you can always pop in and be like oh this is what you like to hear. So I will hope you also join me for the makeup. Also, if you're just here for the sis locks and if you're here usually for the makeup and you join the sis locks, thank you. And if you don't know, the way we end the videos around here, we got to hit it with the chair dance, okay? So you already know what time it is. It's time for the chair dance, chair dance. Hey, 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 chair dance. Mm, mm, chair dance. Mm, 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 chair dance. Mm. All right, y'all. Bye.